Hello to everybody out there in this great big world. This is your brother Dana coming to you from the city of Chicago. Shalom to all of you, my Hebrew family members. I hope you are dusting off the dust <laughs> from your crowns because you are royalty. You are the true children who are about to take your rightful place as promised to your forefather Jacob that you will be the head as we watch now the season, the time of the Gentiles coming to its end. Um, another reason for me to know that you, formerly known as blacks or African Americans, are the true chosen people is because I have seen in my own life of almost 27 years of living with you here in the inner city of Chicago that you have been struck down on every side and yet you're not destroyed your strength your resilience your perseverance and your loyalty to serve a God until now <laughs> at least, that you were made to accept as a white savior, a white God. And you, as this nation referred to you years ago, savages. To see you being treated still, yes, you've fought for some rights, and yes, there are some things that have changed. But yet, at the very core, you are viewed as savages. And I see that all the time as I live here with you and amongst you in the inner city of Chicago. And again, why do I know that you are the true chosen people, the Most High Yah, for one of these very reasons? That you have been struck down on every side, and yet you rise. You have not been destroyed. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthly vessels. See, that's why my white evangelical family members don't get to see the treasure that lies in you because they're judging you based off of your earthly vessel, that you are an individual of a dark pigmented skin. I see your beauty. I get to enjoy your beauty. And I have no problem serving you because of that beauty. And so it is so true that you have the, a treasure in you. The very DNA from the Most High Yah through His Son, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, lies in you. That is why you've never been destroyed. That's why you're triumphant. That's why you're resilient. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And that's another reason I know that it has to be that innate desire, an implant of DNA in you from God himself. See, you are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. You are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. And again, I see it manifested. You, my white evangelical family members, look at what's manifesting in you. Even at the slightest fear that your dominance, your superiority might be taken. Look at how you respond. Look what you do. Look at your fruit. And you claim to be the children or, or believers in Jesus Christ now. And yet, for 27 years, I have watched my black brothers and sisters suffer and be persecuted and hated and degraded on every side. And yet every day I see them raise and rise up 
and persevere. They have been cheated. See, when slavery wasn't enough to destroy God's chosen people, then you began to utilize other ways, the welfare system. You wouldn't hire a black man or at least hire them for enough to pay rent and live. So you created welfare to say, look, we'll let you eat and we'll let you be what we want you to be in the palm of our hands. But, but if the husband, the faithful father that he was is in the home, we are going to let your family starve. See, it was all set up for their failure, but yet you were struck down but not destroyed. Then I see all the laws that were made. I see the correctional facility, which is nothing but a modern day cotton field, struck down on every side, but yet you're not destroyed. I see young men out on the streets that are locked up for years because of small amount of marijuana. And yet today, you, my white family members, are becoming billionaires off the very same substance. Struck down, but yet you've not been able to destroy them. You planted drugs in these communities so they could make the money they need, so then you could incarcerate them take their life away, their freedom away, so they could again harvest in your cotton field, which is today's correctional facility. You know, Mike has been locked up now for 20, well, since 1998. And the reality is, is after they said murder and then they said this, they charged him with now accountability. accountability because they could never find any evidence on this man a signed statement after three days of torture but yet he's been struck down but not destroyed in this season his faith his perseverance him getting almost his master's degree believing that the most high Yah is still going to set him free persecuted, enslaved, degraded, humiliated, struck down, but yet, yet destroyed. Why? Because you will never be able to destroy the remnant of the chosen people of the Most High God, Yah. For 400 years, this nation and nations like us around the world have done everything in our power to destroy the chosen people of God. We've gone to the point of even creating our own Jewish people, ish, like something, but not that something. Because you, my black brothers and sisters, you, my family members of color. You are the true chosen people. And for 400 years, this nation specifically has done everything. Everything that we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Yes, I hear my white family saying, well, we suffer too, we suffer too. You do, but you do not suffer Yeah, you suffer from cancer. But never once did I ever, when going to a hospital, feared that that hospital would reject me because I'm white. Never have I gone to a hospital that I've been pushed to the side, if not out the door, because I was white. Never. Have I ever had to fear for my life that the doctors were doing everything in their power to save me or to save my white loved one? 
But through these years, I have seen how when my black family members who I love have a family member dealing with asthma or cancer or something that is very simple, that remains untreated. Because the doctors and because the system doesn't care about their life. No, none of us white individuals have a clue to what it means to be hard-pressed on every side. <laughs> we don't have a clue to what it means to be persecuted. We don't have a clue to know what it means to be perplexed. We don't have a clue to know what it means to be struck down over and over and over and over again. And when we are challenged just a little bit, again, look at how you act. You don't turn to your God. You turn to your gun. You turn to your white supremacy power. But a power that will fall with the snap of a finger of the true living God, the Most High Yah, the God of the Hebrews, our black brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy chapter 28 in the last portion said, You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed. And the crops of your land and the cal calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in and you will be cursed when you go out. After about 17 years of seeing this happen under the hands of white supremacy to my black brothers and sisters, which was about five years ago. It was right after another young black man was shot and killed. I specifically recalling going upstairs and telling God that he can go to H-E double hockey stick. He could go to hell. Yes, I said that because no longer did I have the perseverance no longer did I have the stamina. No longer did I have the strength. No longer did I have the ability to live my life here in the inner city with my Hebrew brothers and sisters, watching them being struck down on every side over and over again. And so after justifying or trying to put together all of the white evangelical theology you gave me that would make my black brothers and sisters suffering on every side sense, I couldn't come to no sense. They were cursed by Ham, but yet you told me that, hey, in Christ, all curses are broken. So how come Christ didn't break the curse that you said they were under because I am? Well, it was family curses because their, their fathers were lazy and no good. Really? So how does that explain my young men that I've been walking with for 27 years on their way to college to only be wrongfully charged with a murder and now spending life? And that's when I did. I said, God, you can go to hell. But it was at that moment that the true God spoke to me and said, let me tell you what's really going on. And that's when he told me that you, who are formerly called African Americans or blacks, were the true chosen people. And that the curse upon your life was what I was seeing being manifested over and over and over. But with this understanding, he also said that this time of your suffering was coming to an end. And so I am grateful and I am thankful and I am blessed. See, what, what my white family members don't understand 
one thing you always said even with Christianity, well, guess what? You know what? If you if you decide to give your life to Christ and and it just doesn't work out and your life is worse than it was before, you can always go back to the way you were before you came to Christianity, right? Just give it a chance. So now you say I've forsaken you. But I could always go back. There's nothing that has locked me into this position of defending who are now my Hebrew brothers and sisters for justice and now defending them as the true chosen people. There's nothing holding me. I could always go back, but I will never go back. Because see, even if my physical life isn't where I could be if I was not living and doing what I was doing. I say this because I have had many shut doors on my face. One job told me, uh, we, we can't hire you here. You, 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 you're too black. Your background is too black. And that would have been a great promotion. See, I face some of those things for me to understand a little bit of what my Hebrew family is going through. I could easily forsake my calling and go and live in a white suburb or white area and use my masters and my and some of my education and be physically greaterly blessed you could say that I am now but see when you follow the word as you Christians say and the word says, those who bless Israel will be blessed. The blessings that I have gotten from my Hebrew brothers and sisters over these past 27 years is far greater than anything that you, my, he my Gentile family members, could give me. And that is why I do not go back. That is why I will not go back. For the blessings of being a blessing, I pray, to my Hebrew family members is incredible. So, now I understand why formerly known as our black brothers and sisters have never given up and never been destroyed because they are the true chosen people. And they have the very DNA of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And with that DNA, they will be overcomers. And they, as I'm saying now, will and are being transitioned to their place of royalty. Just as God, the Most High Yah, promised Jacob, their forefather, their ancestor. To those who have an ear to hear, I pray that you do. To those that reject this, may the Most High Yah, my God, the Most High Yah, our God, have mercy on you. Shalom.